Now for this part of the question, we're told that the normal at the point P is this line L and it cuts the x-axis at the point Q with coordinates k root 3 and 0. And we've got to work out what this constant k is. Now to do this, what I want to do is obviously find the equation of this straight line. I'm going to give it in the form y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. We know our x1, y1 is going to be the coordinates of p. As for the gradient m, I need to get the gradient of the tangent at this point p. And then I'm going to do the negative reciprocal of that and that will give me the gradient of the normal. So I'll have m and then I'll have the equation of the normal. And at q we know that the y coordinate is 0 and I'll then be able to go ahead and work out what x is. And I can compare it to the x coordinate here, k root 3, and I should be able to find out what k is. So that's briefly then how I'm going to go about this question. And you might at this stage want to pause the video and have a go now yourself. Okay, well, if you did have a go, let's just run through this then. So, as I said earlier, I know my x1, y1 values, they're the points at p, I just need to get the gradient m. And first of all, I find the gradient of the tangent, which is given by dy by dx. So, if I was going down here, dy by dx, I can easily find, once I know the differentials of these two functions here because by the chain rule dy by dx is equal to dy by d something multiplied by the same d something by dx and it has to be for this question d theta which goes here it's as if they cancel out okay so I need to work out what dy by d theta is and d theta by dx and normally we start off by differentiating x in this case with respect to theta so we know that x equals tan theta so therefore dx by d theta equals well the differential of tan theta with respect to theta is sec squared theta the equivalent of 1 over cos squared theta. We'll just put that in there. When it comes to dy by d theta, then dy by d theta, if we differentiate sine theta, we get cos theta. So we know that therefore dy dx is going to be equal to this. And if we work this out, dy by d theta then is going to be cos theta multiplied by d theta by dx. Well, we have dx d theta is 1 over cos squared theta. So we just need to invert this, reciprocate it if you like. And we then get this as being multiplied by cos squared theta. Cos theta times cos squared theta clearly gives us cos cubed theta. So we've got the gradient now at any point on the curve C. We can get the gradient of the tangent at the point P now just by saying that at P in the previous part we worked out that theta was pi upon 3. So let's just put that there. Theta equals pi upon 3. Work that out in the previous part. So let's just say, we'll come down here We'll just say that when theta equals pi upon 3, we can see that dy by dx equals cos of pi upon 3. And all of that is cubed, cos cubed we've got down here at theta. So it's going to be cos of pi upon 3 all cubed. Now the cos of pi upon 3, I always think of this as 60 degrees. You could use your calculator if you don't know it, but the cosine of 60 degrees I know as a half. So we've got a half cubed, which is going to give us one eighth. So at this point then, I therefore know that at P, okay, the gradient of the normal, 
okay gradient of normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of this so in other words the gradient will be minus 8 now I'm in a position to work out what the equation now of the normal is so therefore the equation okay of L is and what's it going to be well it's going to be y minus y1 y1 being the value at p here which is going to be half root 3 or root 3 over 2 okay equals m the gradient which is minus 8 multiplied by x minus x1 which is going to be root 3 here so minus root 3 now we know that at q the y value must be 0 so at q we can say y equals 0 so if we substitute this into our equation here we're going to have minus root 3 over 2 then equals and if we expand the bracket at the same time we're going to get minus 8x and then plus 8 root 3 And at this stage, what could we do? Well, I could add 8x to both sides. So we'd have 8x over here. I could add root 3 over 2 to both sides. And I've got 8 root 3 plus another half root 3. And that's going to give me 8.5 root 3, which is the equivalent of 17 root 3 over 2. So if I divide both sides now by 8, I get that x equals 17 sixteenths root 3 and this is going to be equal to k root 3 the value that we've got is the x coordinate here of q and you can see that when we compare these two k must be equal to 17 sixteenths so it follows from this result then that k equals 17 over 16 17 sixteenths all right